Drew's heard of some dealers who don't shy away from buying and selling the sort of eccentric items he loves. So he's making the five-hour drive from Clandidno to Ferndown in Dorset in the hope of getting his hands on some great new stock. We're off to Home Alchemy and it's Carl and Tracy, husband and wife team, that come out of the corporate world, so relatively new to the game. Doesn't mean they're not any good, though. And he's still getting used to his new specs. The thing is, without them, I can't really see properly anymore. It might stop you buying rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> On the edge of the new forest, the small town of Ferndown is both sedate and affluent, the kind of place where a brash newcomer stands out a mile. Husband and wife team Carl and Tracy Dorr had jobs in marketing and sales. But weary of the day-to-day -day grind, they hung up their business suits to follow their passion for antiques. I find the vintage scene, the antique scene, fascinating. There's not really a theme to what we do. We just buy what we love. We expect a little bit of a haggle. That's part of the life. There you go. Home alchemy. <laughs> There's a lot of good stuff there. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Good, Drew. you? Nice to meet you, Drew. Hi. Tracy. Tracy. Tracy, hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, I love it when you come somewhere and it's just this... a different mix again. First impressions on coming into the shop are good. Um, there's lots and lots of stock here. It's definitely different. There's a real mix. It's fine to go into a shop that just sells Georgian furniture or just sells Regency chamber pots or whatever. That's fine, but I like the mix. That's what I enjoy and that's what I do. I mix things from different centuries together. Um, and they're doing the same here. So, yeah, could be good. Do you do trade prices? Always. <laughs> <laughs> With so many odd and unusual things on offer, it's not long before something grabs Drew's attention. Yes, that only came in yesterday. And how much is, is he, then? Uh, that's 450. 400 and... Yeah, right, OK. Yeah. <laughs> right, you got me. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Next, Drew's eyes light upon another intriguing object. But is it kitsch or just quintessentially Drew? Is it wrong of me to see? I quite like that owl. <laughs> Sometimes I see things that I think, oh, I like that. And then immediately I'll think, oh, no, no, I shouldn't really like that. And that's utterly wrong. So I see this huge glazed terracotta owl. And I don't know, there's just something about it. It made me, I think, oh, yeah, it's such an odd piece. It's the sort of thing you could imagine in, you know, Dallas. Uh, on, on, a, on a desk in, or, or on a side table in, one of, in the Ewing's farm. Terracotta is a type of oven-fired earthenware used to make pots and ornaments like this large painted and glazed owl. Originating from Italy in the 1980s, the eye-catching piece could be worth around £250. How much is it? Uh, about 195 on that, haven't we? Mm. Mm. Probably do 150 Yeah, yeah. Take your chance. Oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you. It's a big old bird for 150 quid. Yeah. You've made mistakes before, but that's the biggest owl you've made yet. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you got a little book of these things. <laughs> <laughs> he, no, he does. He does make them up. not really caring what anybody else thinks, and I don't. Tell me about these skeletons and bones and things that you've got everywhere. These are all um, old medical bones. They're real, yeah? Yes. There's a good market for this. Yes. Not something I'd want to deal with, really. So what about that thing? Yes, that's an original early 30s one, as I'm sure you're aware, with the triple base. Right. The original angle poise lamp, which combines flexibility with perfect balance, was designed by George Cowardine for Herbert Terry and Sons. The three-step base indicates that this is a very early model, dating from the 1930s, much more valuable than the later and more common two-step base. It could be worth around £600. We buy angle poises all the time. 
They're very, very common. There's millions of them out there, but there's hardly any with a three-step bass. Now, these were made in the early part of the 1930s with the three-step bass, only for a brief period. I think it was like three or four years, something like that. We could do that for 95 pence. Okay. Has been rewired. Yeah. Mm. So, marvelous. Fantastic. Amazing. Okay. Amazing. Earliest one I've ever seen. It's lovely, isn't it? The mm. earliest one. I've never seen one that early before. Mm. Yeah, it actually came from a house clearance. And really? It was just in somebody's garage. Unbelievable. I hope the guys are making a profit, because I certainly am going to out of this stuff. It's good stuff, you know? This is good, interesting stuff. These are funky as well. Do you make these up? You see some of the originals and that. You make yeah, the, the, well. the red ones were made up, Yeah. but the orange ones are original. Yeah. That sort of stuff, I just started buying it about a year or so ago. I started buying that, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. It's definitely got its place, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. It's the next, not next big thing, but it's just the next sort of wave of stuff coming through. Yeah. However taken he is with the shock display, Drew knows that there could be even more weird and wonderful objects stashed out the back. Have you got any unrestored stuff? Have you got a storeroom or something of stuff? Oh, yes. You have? We have got... On site? Behind that wall. Can we have a look at that? Sure. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, they came from a specialist shop. Yeah. <laughs> Specialist in what? Mm. Is it Hecknock? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my grandmother thinks it's Hecknock. Yeah. yeah. The manufacturers used to come home every day and go, oh, I've made a boom. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, blimey. So, um, there's lots of things in it. Oh, you've got that sling seat there as well. Tell me about that. We bought that from a couple locally, yeah. and apparently they bought that from Liberties of London. OK. But we've not been able to confirm it. There's no labels on it. Yeah, I like that. How much is that? Uh, as it is. As it is, 150. The sling seat, designed to hang from the ceiling, has a wrought iron frame painted black and leather upholstery. Dating from the 1960s, it could be worth around 300 pounds. What for it? Yeah. It's not bad quality, but it is very, very, very much of its time and a great colour. And I've not seen one like that before. And it's really viable. Well, 100 quid by it. I'll take a chance on it. Salvage Supremo Drew Pritchard is at antique shop Home Alchemy in the sleepy Dorset town of Ferndown. He's driven 300 miles to search for the kind of offbeat items that he's known for. It's a big old bird from 150 quid. He's come across a rare 1960s sling chair, said to be originally from Liberty of London, and is bidding hard to buy it. Well, 100 quid by it. I'll take a chance on it. 120. Do you like seats? Yeah. Okay. I'll just take a chance on that. I cool. think, think it's got enough about it. Mm. Certainly a great colour. Yes. And get that repaired fairly easily. Maybe get a cushion made. You could have it in the office, and you could have Enzo on your lap, and as it spins around. <laughs> 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 it's odd and unusual, and quite well designed, and interesting, and a good colour. So, and the price is right, so we'll buy it. Drew's already spent nearly four hundred pounds, and with such an eclectic mix of interesting and quality items on offer, there's no. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. 
Squirreled away deep in the recesses of the storeroom, there are some things with a real touch of the mid-20th century about them. You've got these vinyl chairs. I didn't. Yes. I thought you just had the one. No, we've got three. We did have six, but unfortunately three have been sold. These swivel chairs, upholstered in red vinyl with an alloy base, originally came from a barber's shop. Dating from the 1950s, they could be worth around £150 each. Vinyl chairs, don't really buy them very often. You know, they sort of smack of cheapness, but I can buy them at the right money. We'll buy them and we'll turn them over because they are comfortable, good quality chairs underneath all of that. The base particularly well made as well. Can you do the three for 225? Yeah. Marvellous. I'll take all those. Cheers. Lovely. OK, this is good. Cheers. Excellent. Let's fill that van up. Today was excellent, really good. I did my favourite thing, which is buying loads of stuff. Meeting new dealers and going around a shop I've not been to before and buying a couple of really good items. It's unusual for me to go to one shop and buy this much stuff. So there's an awful lot of things that I really like in here. The way I buy, you know, it changes all of the time. I get to the point where I don't question myself at all. If it's priced right and I like it, that's enough for me. Sorted? Yeah, all in. Wasn't anything big, was it? No. That don't mess with me, I've come armed. <laughs> Tracy, a pleasure, thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you, too. Oh, see you again, mate. Thanks. Bye-bye. Good luck. to meet you. Yeah, see thank you again. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh. <laughs> Give me a hand. <laughs> Drew's bought exactly what he was after, a van full of offbeat and unusual items. That was a good haul. It was. There's a lot of good stuff there. Oh, we done good. We done good. I, I, my gut reaction is that I could have actually found more. There's more there. The prices are fantastic.
properties. It's sort of so grotesquely mm. horrible, it's great. Yeah. My customers definitely wouldn't have been buying that off me 10 years ago, that's for sure. But I think it just comes with time in the job, confidence in your own abilities, and not really caring what anybody else thinks. And I don't. Tell me about these skeletons and bones and things that you've got everywhere. These are all um, old medical bones. They're real, yeah? Yes. There's a good market for this. Yes. Not something I'd want to deal with, really. So what about that thing? Yes, that's an original early 30s one, as I'm sure you're aware, with the triple base. Right. The original angle poise lamp, which combines flexibility with perfect balance, was designed by George Cowardine for Herbert Terry and Sons. The three-step base indicates that this is a very early model, dating from the 1930s, much more valuable than the later and more common two-step base. It could be worth around £600. We buy angle poises all the time. They're very, very common. There's millions of them out there, but there's hardly any with a three-step base. Now, these were made in the early part of the 1930s with the three-step base, only for a brief period. I think it was like three or four years, something like that. We could do that for £95. Pounds. OK. It has been rewired. Yeah. Sold. Yeah. Marvellous. Fantastic. Amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Earliest one I've ever seen. It's lovely, isn't it? The mm. earliest one. I've never seen one that early before. Mm. Yeah, it actually came from a house clearance. And really? It was just in somebody's garage. Unbelievable. I hope the guys are making a profit, because I certainly am going to out of this stuff. It's